patients, your patients. Um, my name is Dr. Eric Hahn. I'm a chiropractor here at Oasis, at Oasis Chiropractic in town. Um, I started talking about fibromyalgia probably 10 or 15 years ago. I started researching it. Uh, a few people I know have it. And so as I started looking into it, I learned more and more about it. And I've been trying to talk a little bit about it. Since. So we're going to learn a little bit of this new information that's, that's come out about it. Some of the stuff is older information, but we're going to try to... Uh, there's a lot of information that I have. I could probably talk on this subject for uh, a couple days. So we're going to try to cover a lot of information in a short amount of time. If I start going too fast for anybody, just wait a thumb down and I'll slow down a little bit. And if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand and ask questions because I want to make sure that you're understanding a few of the different concepts. So the first thing we're going to talk about is fibromyalgia itself. Um, the, the actual definition of fibromyalgia, does anyone know what, what the actual definition is or what, what it actually means? Yeah, exactly. So if, if you go to the doctor and you say, you know, I've got pain here and here and here, and you're telling them that you have pain in your muscles, fibromyalgia means the fibers of the muscles, algae means pain, so pain in the muscles. For a more specific Might have to go with the, with the second option. <laughs> All right. Hopefully this won't bother you, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this option because the other option's not working. Uh, basically, if there's 18 different tender points throughout your body that they check, base of the neck, shoulders, throughout the back, hips, arms, and if you have pain in 11 of those different spots for more than three months, then they're gonna diagnose you as fibromyalgia. There's not really a, a cause to it. They don't look and say, why is it hurting in all these different spots? You're just going to say, I've got pain in a bunch of different spots. That's what the diagnosis is. Now, this is an interesting stat. Women are affected nine times more than men. So if you think about all the people on the planet that have, or in the United States that have fibromyalgia, it's four, four to eight million that have been diagnosed. A large majority of them are women. Does anybody know the reason why? Why women are affect, affected more? Uh, a couple things. Uh, Women process pain a little differently than men, and men, men have seven times more serotonin releasing throughout their body. Those are a couple of the different reasons that I have read. Serotonin is one of the chemicals in the body that helps modulate or control pain. This is what a lot of people have been thinking. More recently, we're, we're learning that uh, estrogen is a major factor in this disease, and the reason why is because in society today, there's a lot more pollution with pesticides and chemical pollutants and PBAs uh, from plastics. A lot of this pollution mimics estrogens. So there's a lot of, as this says, our world is, is swarming with estrogen and estrogen-like substances. So soy is a plant-based estrogen. Uh, they were doing a lot of hormone therapy recently. If you measure the levels just of estrogen just in the Mississippi River, you're going to find that there's a lot of estrogen in Mississippi River and in other rivers throughout, throughout Minnesota. But the bottom line is too much estrogen is going to create problems in our body chemically and with, with hormone levels and balances. So the problem is when we have, when we have that excess estrogen, our body is going to create some problems. Pain is one of them. So um, symptoms that are associated with fibromyalgia, anxiety, fatigue, muscle spasms, depression, tender points, a lot of stuff that we've heard about that we kind of already know. Uh, the trouble is fibromyalgia is really painful and so we have, uh, it's going to be exhausting at some point, just disabling at some other points, it's confusing, it's frustrating, and, and it's kind of scary sometimes because we don't really understand uh, where is it coming from, what's causing it, but that's what we're going to try to understand today. What are some things that we can do that we can change in our life that's going to help us change 
the ability to feel pain and to have fibromyalgia. So here's one thing that we know fibromyalgia is not. It's not a, it's not a lack of medication in our body. We didn't develop fibromyalgia. We didn't have all this extra pain because of a lack of pain medication. We weren't born with a lack of pain medication in our body, and that's what caused us to develop fibromyalgia. So these are just a bunch of the different medications that they've used. They try to treat it on a, f a few different levels because they're not really sure what's causing it medically. Um, so you'll get anything from, from a anti-anxiety medication to a pain medication to anti-seizure medication to muscle relaxers to um, sleeping aids and narcotics. So there's a lot, a wide variety of things that they try to throw at this diagnosis to try to help. We're going we're gonna to look at it at a little different angle. So we're not going to be talking about the medications tonight. Um, the trouble with pharmaceuticals is they're, they're geared towards treating the symptoms. So the symptom is pain. And one view is to look at what can I do to get, what can I give you to cover up the pain and get rid of your pain. We're going to try to look at more along the lines of what's causing it and how do we change that so we don't develop it, so we don't feel that. Um, other trouble with pharmaceuticals is there's potentially side effects and so we start taking some, some medications for one thing and then we get some side effects and we have to deal with another thing and take some more medication for that. It's kind of a, a, a vicious cycle. Um, we know that it's definitely not an imaginary disease so sometimes we feel like when we can't find the solution that it's just in our head and that, that, that if we could just figure it out um, that, it, that maybe really isn't a problem but we know that it's definitely not just all in our head. We know that there really is uh, tender points we can measure them. And this is saying fibromyalgia, the, the secret cure to fibromyalgia is not hidden in a, in a jungle in, or a rainforest in Africa or in South America. Um, there's a lot of uh, advertising that's done geared towards people that suffer with chronic pain uh, from different routes and they say, well, we found this bark that was hidden in a rainforest down in Africa and it's going to cure fibromyalgia or we found this berry or this juice. There's a lot of things that are, that are kind of geared towards that. And a lot of them have some merit because they're loaded with antioxidants. And we're going to learn a little bit about what antioxidants are and how they can help. But uh, the reality is we don't have to go to South America to a jungle to find the cure for fibromyalgia. There's going to be cures that we can do and things we can do right here, right now. And like I said, fibromyalgia is kind of a vicious cycle because it starts with pain and stress. Then we start losing sleep because we can't sleep because we're, we can't get comfortable, which is going to lead to more pain because we're tired, which leads to more pain causes more chronic fatigue, and it's just kind of the cycle just keeps spiraling and spiraling and getting worse and getting worse. If we get some sleep, we feel better. If we felt better, we could sleep. We, we wouldn't be so tired, and, that's, and if we weren't so tired, we wouldn't hurt so much. If we, if we weren't hurt so much, we wouldn't have so much stress. So. Usually we see that there's a start to it, there's something that causes it to, to like a trigger, and it can be any one of these things, like a physical trauma, like a whiplash or a surgery, or an infection, like we got sick, or we had a major stress in our life, like somebody died, or we had a major change in a relationship, or we lost a job, different, a lot of different physical, mental, and chemical stresses that are usually the triggers to start fibromyalgia. A lot of times if we look back at our life, we can kind of think about it and say, you know what, I was better before this state, after this state, it 